Hello and welcome back to Reviving Idler. As you know, we've been doing a lot of re-ribbing recently. We've been popping in these steamed ribs and that's a theme that is going to be continuing for the foreseeable future. We've got around 31 still to go, I believe. In this short episode, I'll be looking at the life cycle of a rib. So we'll be looking at removing one of the old ones, the rotten ones, and replacing with a new one. We will follow this one rib all the way from lump of lumber and into the boat and everything involved in that process. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy it. Well, good morning. Um, as we expected, we are looking at a little bit of a delay in the wood order and that is due to the yards being closed due to the COVID situation. Um, so, last bit of wood I've got which is suitable is this piece of oak here. Um, I'll be able to get one rib out of this um, in between the knots and that's pretty much me going to be out of the So the wood. first thing I need to do is look for a, a suitable bit of wood in the lump of lumber that is going to do the job of a rib. So I'm looking to avoid any knots, checks or weird grain patterns, particularly run out. I need to make sure that I can get a suitable length in the lumber that's actually going to allow me to take a rib out. So the ribs are about 40 mil wide by about 23 mil deep and about two meters long ideally. However, in this case, we're not going to get quite two meters. Okay, upon slightly closer inspection, uh, looking for knots, we've got a couple of, this one's obviously slightly larger, we've got a small one cutting through, coming out over here, uh, and we've obviously, as we knew already, we had a fair bit of uh, knotting up this end here. So we've, we've not got a lot left in this, this beam, to be honest. We've got around about uh, 60 inches, so that's what, uh, 150 centimetres, something like that. Um, and assuming we don't have any real issue coming out on top of that, so above this, so this area here, taking a beam out there. As long as we don't have any real issue with the grain once we've cut that piece, um, I think I'll be able to fit this into just forward of the forward frame. It's great, it means I can still progress. I mean, all these ribs will need replaced eventually anyway. It's going to be going in on the starboard side of the boat where there's very little damage anyway. So, so that's positive. It means I'm not wasting uh, a piece of wood. There's still something in there. I can still be progressing forward despite these restrictions. So that's great. I'm just going to go ahead and chop this piece out, uh, get it uh, measured up, uh, sized up, and then go ahead and pop it in. Okay, so this is the piece we've just cut out there. Um, we've just clipped the edge of one of the dots there, and there's a little bit of tightness in the grain rolling through there. Uh, where this rib is going up forward is uh, it's not particularly uh, tight a turn. So the ribs we've been putting in already have got this very tight curve to them, almost a double bend, like an S bend almost in them. So that puts a lot of strain obviously in the wood when you bring it into that, that, that turn. And where this rib is going to go up forward is very much a simple V. It's not a great deal of twist going on in there, so I think we'll be okay with this. I'll just go ahead just now and uh, plane this down so it's the correct size. And then what I'll be looking to do is uh, trim the ends to the uh, appropriate shape. Now there isn't a pocket that this one's going to sit in um, and I need to dig away some of the bitumen which is uh, in the forward end of the boat to see if there's a pocket or a recess that's going to house it.
And uh, there we have it, a nearly finished rib. Little bevel cut on the face that we're going to nail and slightly less but just taking the sharp corner off on the, the side that goes against the planking. I think this will do quite well. Let's jump into the boat, have a quick peek in there, see where it's going to go and start taking out some of that bitumen. So here you are right up in the bow and we're looking at that forward floor. Top of the knee going forward onto the stem post and then looking to the left and right we can see the forward frame. Now I've got round about 150 centimetres to play with so it's just short of 60 inches <coughs> and that allows me to put in this rib here with that bit of wood I've got. Now if you look at this one on the starboard side you can see quite clearly we've got a break just there so I think I'm going to replace that one so I'll have to cut those out as you've seen me do before I'll use the reciprocating saw and just punch them back through countersink the planks on the back side where I have to watch out is these ends are obviously very very soft but I don't think they're going particularly deep I don't think there's a pocket in there I think they're just cut to the shape around the side of this knee and up flush with the planking if you look forward you can see they're just sitting against the uh, the forefoot there and I expect that that is all that these ones are doing as well they're just sitting on them so that should make it quite easy we just cut a wee angle so that it matches that and then in it goes <laughs> so that, that rib does go all the way down but it's completely rotted away so there's just a, a gap and you can feel it, you can basically dig it out that's very rotten in there I'm not completely surprised to see that it's, uh, it was long my expectation that we would be rotten down here uh, you can see in the very first video the water dribbling out from uh, just, just back here actually uh, yeah just, just behind this knee where that water was dribbling out so I'm not surprised at all that we're seeing the initial stages of rot down here but we'll uh, keep digging see what we can see this little block here is free it's just not wanting to come out Sadly, the uh, that feels like soil, like earth soil. That is just fully rotten, soaking wet rotten wood pulp. I mean, that is. I mean, that is soil. That is what you plant your. Uh, that is what you plant your carrots in, you know? Wow. Well, that's not good. Yeah, the foot doesn't feel overly soft anywhere. There's a, a bolt buried in there. Hoover in here. Start digging out more, see what's going on. I'm astonished given how disgusting that is. How solid the wood feels. I honestly just can't believe that. I mean that is mud. Has that just been washed in there over the years? 
or is that that rotten rib disintegrating and creating a little ecosystem down there there is no bottom of that rib but going back into the bottom even right in the bottom of this frame I think right in the very very bottom corner there might be a bit of softness but actually yeah yeah you get the softness in there so where it joins the foot sorry where it joins the knee got softness in there and all the way through there but actually it's, it's amazingly solid for for what it is again I, I'm astonished this boat is just amazing me it's just everything seems to be so much better than I expected it to be okay so I've done a little bit of excavation work um, an incredible amount of mud down there um, she was spent a good portion of her life on mud berths and she was certainly on a mud berth when I picked her up uh, years and years ago back in Wales um, so I'm not surprised to find mud down there but I'm also surprised to find mud down there given that it's been backfilled with uh, tar you would have thought you would have cleaned that out before you uh, before you put the tar in anyway nice big knee um, all the way down to the keel you can start to see the keel here so that's great it looks at the moment in a very similar condition as the rest of the keel which is good I'll get these gar boards off shortly and have a peek down at the rabbit and just see what the story is down there initial poking and prodding about this knee uh, is positive again just like the aft one so you never know these might actually stay in the boat um, I'll remove them obviously give them a once over poke and prod scratch cut re, re sand etc but uh, it'd be nice if they'd go back in so just reiterating this is the rib that we're going to take out and as you can see it's uh, very very soft down here crumbles away and if you go down on the side of it you can just you can poke the, the tool basically right the way through in fact you can there you are right there all the way through so completely rotten down here I would have I would have thought that this rib would carry on all the way down to very bottom but looking forward again you can see you can see that the line of this is just butting up against that and I think there may well be a little gap in the bottom there and again looking forward again I don't think these have been uh, sort of like feather perfectly fitted I think they're kind of just butted up against this knee you know obviously we'll be looking to get as tight a fit as possible and anything we can't uh, fit will be getting filled with tar and eventually bitumen as well much like they had it um, hopefully without the mud though well then cut all these off removing this rib all the way up and then we'll get that scraped back cleaned up and the next rib popped in well just a way to take this rib out let's have at it So we're looking at one rib's worth of nails, old versus new, quite a difference. Now we need to size up the new nails because the holes that have uh, already been put in for the old ones 
um, may not swell back to the same size in the future. So we go up a fraction, okay, just basically the next size up. So depending on what boat you may be working on, take what old nails you had, size up one and go for that. And you should have a nice snug fit. So our rib is obviously going to be coming down and into this tight little space here. Now obviously we're going to get conventional means to take a template of what that's going to be like. But what I can do is I can use two triangular bits of wood and what I can do is I can take two measurements from either side of the rib. Now we've got a flat edge here to go against the flat edge of the knee and we poke that down we just make sure it's bedded down and make sure that that lies and we make sure that lies nice and flush against the knee and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other triangular piece of wood and I'm going to poke that in behind it and use that edge to lie flat against the planking and that will give me that angle again just give that a wee knock make sure it's nice and tight what I'm then going to do is I'll make a couple of marks so if I do lose grip of this I can find the marks again and I'm also going to mark it on the back side here as well because it's a little bit better access for me what I'll do is I'll then take that away scribe that onto a bit of uh, plywood and then I've got the angle for the most forward side of the rib. I'll then take this out. And that there is the angle I need to cut into this side of the rib. I'll repeat the process to get this side of the rib, put the two together on either side, cut the angle, and then that should fit nice and snugly in there hard and flat against there, against the, the knee. So we've used our plywood template to take um, that side and that side of the rib. But what we don't have is that angle there. Now if you look at the knee and where it meets the rabbit, there's a gentle slope running up there. So what I've done is I've measured the distance between the top of the knee and the bottom on either side of the rib there and there so I have a depth of the hole now I can take that dimension from the top using the top of the knee as my, as my datum line and I can work backwards so if I take my datum line on my rib add it to there I know how long that is, so I measure down and then I decide that that distance there and there is that distance to there and then I can put my angle, my template angle against there and cut that and then take that datum line again and measure across to the other side and I pop the angle for this side and I measure down and determine that that point there is where I'm going to have the start of the angle and then I can use a sliding bevel to then draw that line and cut that angle across. So in practice the angle on the rib is, is very fine. It's only just off a, a 90 degree. So for the purpose of this drawing I've, I've exaggerated that angle to make it clear what it is I'm drawing. So to better make sense of what I've just been uh, wittering about, if you imagine this is a, a drawing of one of our uh, rib stocks we have an angle like that, a template for that, and we have a template for something else across the plank over here, and that angle as well. We also now have an angle across the width of the rib, like that. 
which is great. So we've got two options at this point. We can stick a saw in there and make sure it follows that line and that line and it will come out roughly where it should over here. But a slightly more belt and braces way of doing things is to take the sliding bevel which is the device that looks a little bit like this and we take that angle there we flip it over to the other side of the rib and then we draw it on over here where it matches the ends of the angles that we cut so here and here are where that angle runs out of the rib excuse me while I use the the right color code and that should be then replicated over there and then we take out or that would be the inner face that sits against the knee what we do is we take the saw and then we connect all the lines and we straight through there and it should fit like a glove so let's see if we got it right that'll do for me so while the steamer is heating up we'll get some of our magic red lead potion uh, onto the end of the rib to go in I am going to put a little bit down in the bilge just now uh, although the knee is going to come out and the garboard strake as well so there's going to be plenty of room to get access around there uh, later on it's maybe a pointless exercise but it's um, we're here we might as well slap a little bit down anyway Why did I not take the time to put on my gloves? So we've got a couple more minutes on the steamer. Pull it out and whack it into the boat. Now, broken drill bits, like this one here, are something you're likely to have to deal with if you are building a boat. Um, it's quite a difficult thing to deal with. Now, in this case, I've gotten quite lucky because it's actually gone through the bit of wood I'm working on um, when it's sheared. So that gives me a little bit of something to play with. Now, if that shears off and it's completely inside the wood, you're kind of stuck, you can't really do too much. You can attempt to drive it out with a with a little sort of a, a drift. So you've got the same size or the same diameter um, hole and you simply hammer that back through. There's a chance that you might be able to drive that out. And if the shank is, is clean and the hole, hole's opened up all right, you might be able to then just get pliers on it and pull out the bit that you've uh, hammered in to drive out the, the sheared bit, if that makes sense. Um, in this case, I think we'll get quite lucky in the sense that we've got that there. We've been drilling from the outside of the hull in. So I can hopefully just use my drill, fit that over the top and then back it out slowly with the uh, direction of the thread and we should be okay. Like so. And you have to be very careful doing this because obviously any directional torque on this is going to potentially shear it so we want to be very careful okay so not quite tight enough yet once we've got a hold of it we then put gentle um, turns on it and hopefully we can then pull back on the drill and we'll get the sheared drill bit out like so so that was lucky, I managed to get that out of there, 
And that's going to be made up of all kinds of nasty metals, it's cheap drill bits. So there'll be all kinds of alloys and just cheap steel, cheap iron, whatever, you know, random things in there. So who knows what kind of damage that could be doing to the either planking or the ribstock in the future. So glad we got that out. We don't want that in my boat. Now, I apologise for the, the low lighting, it's a very overcast day um, and there's uh, still some snow on top of the tarp so I can't actually uh, get much light down here but we're nailing up down the side here and I'm going to stop at this nail Now, on all the ribs I've been replacing, I've not been nailing in the garboard right, and the reason for that is the garboard's going to come out because that's going to allow us to look at the rabbit along the bottom of the keel and that's going to be important, there's no point in putting nails in here just now and having to take them out again anyway. So, not nailing in the garboard, but in this one forward, this nail here actually goes straight through and goes into the bottom of the knee as well. So, I can't actually put a, a rove over the end of that one, and if I nail that just now, that hole there, that's going to go into the knee and make it more difficult to remove the knee at a later point. So, I'm going to leave that nail out, finish the nailing there. Once these are all nailed and roved, I'll take these screws out and put nails in as well. Okay, so now we've got Mark back to help us out. So we're going to be able to get our rows over the top of these nails and um, start getting that all tightened back up. So we'll just get to it. And so we have got the rib installed now. All the nails are roved over and the rib is where it is going to stay. So the next step is to get it protected, so get it oiled up and protected against the weather. And that will be the end of this rib story for just now. Moving forward from here, we are going to be waiting on the oak arriving for the rest of the ribs. So we'll get a video made up when that actually starts to happen. Next episode, we're going to be sawing up some windblown oak that we uh, have got a tip off for. And we're going to be looking to see what kind of lumber we can get out of that. The aim is to try and get some hanging knees and some lodging knees. Um, stay tuned to see what we manage to get out of that one. As always, I would like to say a big, big thank you to every single one of you sitting at home and watching and commenting on these videos. It's greatly, greatly appreciated by me. It really lifts the spirit and it really keeps the momentum going on this project through what is quite a, a hard time at the moment for a lot of us. So I really appreciate it. I'd also like to apologise to every single one of you for the dodgy audio and the dodgy video that we've had uh, for the last six episodes. It has been pretty poor, I am well aware of that. Um, I thought I could wing it, I absolutely can't wing it. You guys are too sharp for that. So uh, you've motivated me to upgrade my audio equipment, so we're all mic'd up. We've got a um, better camera and we've got better um, tripods and all the rest of it. So hopefully we'll have uh, a better quality video for you guys back home to enjoy going forward. So thank you for uh, motivating me to take that extra step there as well. So that's all I've got time for this week. Thank you very much once again. Take it easy and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.